welcome back to yet another episode of the Safis Abroad Rugby Podcast. Uh, I hope you're all doing well and keeping safe. You know, we are almost there with lockdown, uh, just a little longer to go. Um, but yeah, just hang in there. I'm, I'm excited as always, and um, I'm joined yet again by another incredible talent, um, Handro Liebenberg. Handro, how are you doing, my friend? Good and you, buddy. Good to see you. Oh, good to see you too, man. Thank you so much for joining me. It's always good chatting to you. And finally, I've, I've been able to, to get you on a podcast. Um, where yeah. are you now? What are you, what are you up to? Um, I'm in Leicester at the moment. I uh, had an off day today. Um, so I've been just chilling at the moment. The weather's not that great. So I've been stuck inside for a bit, slept in a bit this morning. So yeah, a bit lazy today, to be honest. That must be quite nice for a play, you know, to have to have days off in general, but especially when when you're able to have a bit of a lion then, yeah? No, definitely. Especially if the weather's like this on an off day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. I mean, look, it's it certainly has been an incredibly interesting time for all of us these, these past 12 months in regards to, you know, the big C. Um but how have you kept personally? What have you been able to do personally for yourself and those around you to sort of deal with all of this? Yeah, it's been tough. I must say, like, especially first lockdown, I say, was, was the toughest um, because we, we've been off for a while. And for me, especially, like, um, I struggle to to motivate myself to go train sometimes. And I think that was the biggest thing for me is just to actually get up, set myself an uh, alarm to get up and... Um, not just to sleep in, just to get up, go train, get it done with. Otherwise, as the day goes on, I just lose interest. So that probably was my biggest thing. Um, luckily, my family still in South Africa. Um, spoke a lot to them. Um, luckily, my girlfriend was this side with me, so I went by myself. So it went too bad. Otherwise, I probably went insane if it was just <laughs> me. Um, but no, otherwise, it was good. It was an interesting time. Still is. Um, but I think we're adapting and we, we're going on really well now, yeah. What do you typically like to do on your days off then? Normally, play a bit of golf. Um, obviously, the golf course is closed now, but I like to play a bit of golf. Played a fair bit uh, just before all the lockdown started. Um, not the best golfer, <laughs> but I uh, just enjoy it. Yeah, there's a few guys playing with as well, so just good fun just to switch off a bit and enjoy something else as well. Uh, do you get to play much with some of the other boys on the team? Yeah, there's a few other boys. Uh, Charlie Clare, Jasper came over now. He brought his he bought a pair of clubs now. So as soon as the golf course open, we'll hit, we'll hit it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've mentioned that you're now with Leicester Tigers, and how was how was settling in into Welford Road for you? Can you take us back to that initial first time? Yeah, um, I must say, like I straight off to school, I went to the Bulls. I uh, played there for six years and um, the the opportunity came came along and I was like, yes, it's a great opportunity. Why not? Um, club like Leicester, I mean, you can't say no to. Um, so, no, I grabbed the opportunity, uh, came here, didn't know really what to expect. My first time coming overseas as well, um, didn't know what to expect, came by myself uh, initially. And um, it was challenging. I must say, the first few weeks was challenging just to get everything sorted, to settle in. Um, I've been here now a year and a half, and I'm absolutely enjoying it. It's a great club. Um, yeah, a lot of changes still at the club, um, trying things and implementing things. But uh, I must say, it's been an enjoyable, enjoyable time since I've uh, arrived at Leicester. A nice mixture of staffers in the team. I mean... Yeah. What has what has that meant to you? You know, to have to or to be able to play alongside such such talented players. No, definitely. Um, I must say, like having for, uh, other South Africans around, it just makes it a bit easier. Um, just to to chat about other things, and um, not that I do with the other guys, but just like it brings a different vibe as well. Um, it's good to have those South African boys, especially with the the talent that there is in South Africa to have those boys around you um, just gives you a bit of confidence as well. And um, yeah, just must say, um, slowly but surely, Steve is getting in a few South Africans. Uh, don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I uh, know, yeah, the stuff is coming along here in Leicester, um, get, getting more by the day. What's a, a typical day like in the life of a pro rugby player at Leicester then from the minute you wake up till... Till you get to go to bed in the end. Um, 
I guess some days a bit more hectic than others, but a full day would probably be from eight, starting at eight, go in, have a sit down with a meeting, everyone have a meeting, have the planning out for the day, schedules given to us. And um, then we probably have a strength first thing in the morning, do our weights, get that done. Then we'll probably have a unit session, which uh, is for forwards, mostly like scrums, line up malls. That will probably be about an hour, hour and a bit. Then we'll have a bit of lunch, um, sit down, have a chat, just mingle a bit. And then we'll probably have another meeting just before our main session in the afternoon. And um, yeah, then we go out, probably train for an hour, hour and a half. Uh, that's our big sessions is normally in the off afternoon. And then after that, just shower, recover and by the time you get home, it's four o'clock. So then the day passes quickly. <laughs> <laughs> now, is there any part of your day that you absolutely can't wait to get to? And I guess second part of that question, is there any part of the day that you just absolutely dread? Yeah, uh, I must say like probably uh, Wednesdays is our toughest sessions. So when you wake up Wednesday morning, you're like, but also then you know you have the Thursday off, so that keeps you motivated. <laughs> so you just push through that Wednesday. Um, yeah, I mean, like, Wednesdays is tough, but it's also one of the sessions, like, you could really improve on as well. Um, it tests you quite a bit mentally and physically. So it's a good session, uh, especially to have before your off day. But uh, I'm not a morning person, so for me, getting up early is a, is a struggle. Uh, I like to sleep in a bit. Um, but as soon as the day's done, like you just come home, relax a bit, and then you eat the new day. So, so it's so compact, like from I say Monday to to Wednesday, and after that, it's quite chilled leading into the game. So it's probably those first three days of the week that's a bit mm. hectic. Other than that, it's quite quite relaxed. And I'm assuming on game days, you just get a bit of sort of you know work done before kickoff, and just so that the body is rem reminded of what's to come for the next eighty minutes. Yeah, definitely. The day before we play, we normally just have a, a quick session, nothing longer than half an hour, just to refresh, just to get you going again after the off day, um, just to get the engine running. And yeah, on game day as well, um, it's normally nice and relaxed going into it. Um, it's normally that half an hour before the game where the nerve kicks in and the, the adrenaline starts pumping. Now, I, I remember seeing earlier or sort of Earlier in your career, um, you did an interview where you were quite adamant, you know, that you wanted to put the Springbok jersey on. Is, is that still something that you're quite passionate about? Uh, people ask me that quite regularly. Um, but uh, to put it in this way, like, I'll, obviously, I won't mind playing for them. I would love to play for them uh, if the opportunity comes. Um, but since I moved over up, not I made peace with it, but I or I made peace with the fact that if I'm not going to get picked, it's fine. If I do get picked, it's a bonus and I'll enjoy it and I'll relish every moment of it. But it's not my main focus or for me personally, it's just if I play well, if I play well for Leicester, if I play well for me personally, then the opportunities will come if that so happens. But that's not my main focus. I think for me, it's just to play well every single weekend and if that comes by, I'll take it as a bonus. Well said, man. Now, yeah. look, you're not you're not the only one in your family that plays rugby. I mean, both okay. both you and your brother play professionally. Um, what is your relationship like with Vian? And you know, do you ever find yourself calling him, asking for a bit of advice, or vice versa? You know, do you have any weekly catch ups, or how does it work? <laughs> no, we talk often, or probably twice a week. Uh, so we speak often, we video call normally. Um, we have a really good relationship. Um, I think we understand each other quite well because we're in the similar environments as well. Um, and that makes it easy sometimes. So definitely, there's definitely a lot of advice going around. A lot of banter as well, joking around with our schedules and stuff, especially in this time. Um, I haven't seen him in a while, though. I went before lockdown, I probably went to visit him twice. Um, so no, it's good to see him. He's not that far from me. Um, so no, we speak often. Uh, we have a really good relationship. So yeah. 
I mean, that's got to make your, your family super proud. Eh? Like, I mean, what are your, your family Zooms like? I mean, what are the quizzes like having two <laughs> pro two pro players? Yeah, no, um, my parents love their sport. They love their sport at school as well. So they, uh, my father's, uh, yeah, he probably the one that planted the seed with the rugby right with us. He was not a, he was a good player as well. I never played professionally, but he was always a good player. And I think like he started quite young with me and my brother. And we just got the love for it and then took it from there. But no, I think my parents are extremely proud. Um, we speak quite often as well. And it's always just singing our praises. You know what parents like. Yeah. Uh, just to lift you up a bit. But no, it's good to have people around you, parents and brother, um, that you can always rely on. They lift you up and encourage you. Besides rugby, of course, and, and, and a bit of golf, Um is there any other sport that you're quite passionate about? Any other teams that you're, you know, really feel strong about? Um, uh, I watch a lot of sport. Um, must have, since, I, since I came to the UK, um, obviously they massive about the football. Um, I can't see, I can't just get myself to watch 90 minutes of football. I just struggle to do that. But I follow the scores and I'm, I'm always looking for highlights and that. But um, yeah, I can't get myself to sit down and actually watch a football game. <laughs> I play actually um, when I just came over to the UK. Um, one of the mates in in Leicester uh, at Leicester Tigers, he played a bit of uh, club cricket. So he asked me if I want to go join. I played cricket at school as well. Always enjoyed it. Um, so I went for two or three games. Uh, played for Belton Park, they're called. Okay. Uh, they in Grantham, so. Played two or three games for them, social uh, cricket on Saturdays. Uh, it was during our preseason. Really enjoyed that. A lot of fun, um, but nothing too serious. So that was good crack. So no, no fifers or anything like that? No, 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 no. no. Look, uh, <laughs> I'm just there to make up the numbers. If I have to bat, I bat. If I have to bowl, I'll do that as well. But, um, I'm just there for the vibe, just there for, for the experience. Surely as a, as a pro player, you know, you have some sort of bit of you must have that competitiveness in you if you know i'm sure you're out there when you when the captain's coming over to you and say listen we're, we're in a bit of a pickle here do you mind taking a, a few quick polls i mean surely you do you do get into it definitely no i must say like at, at first i was like no just going for the for the chilled saturday uh, cricket but as soon as you get into it you're like we need 20 runs to win then the competitive juices start flowing got a couple of sort of easy question to ease sort of ease you into them a couple of questions you know about some of your teammates it could be South Africans or wherever else they're from you know um let's start with the first one here so who would you say is is always on their phone who is probably caught on social media the most um that's a tough one um I would say Jack on Bridge Fleet um <laughs> our, our scrum off the the young scrum off uh, he loves the social media, loves to post his tries, his um, celebrations. <laughs> but uh, the guys are always taking the mick out of him. But uh, no, he's probably the one I would say is always on his phone. What about um, who is always first into training and, and last out? That's probably Joe Hayes, the one prop. Um, I don't know if he pays his electricity bills or what, but he's <laughs> first in. First into training, have a shower, have, brush his teeth at training. When he leaves, his last one to leave always. Um, I don't know if he like, doesn't like it at home or what, but uh, his first day last out always. So you haven't noticed any of the scrum bags sort of just lying around on the floor when you guys have popped no, into training now? I don't think he's, he's in early and out late uh, because of training. I just think he's there <laughs> for the boys, just for the chat. <laughs> And I guess I guess the opposite would be who's you know who's or who's the lazy one who's last into training and always the first to leave. I would say Luan the Brain, uh, that's my, <laughs> fellow, my fellow South African. Um, he loves to nip off quickly straight off to training. Um, I think the missus keeps him busy at home. Uh, I saw this morning again on his off day six o'clock. He has to go for a walk again. Um, so no, I think the poor lad's having a rough time there. <laughs> I believe that you you play a bit of uh, Call of Duty. Am I wrong yeah. in saying that? Is that or is that a, just a made up story? No, that is true. That is true. Now we have a question here from someone. You might 
may or may not know them. Um, a guy called Eric Kankowski. And yeah. he he asks, um, how did Hundro get his name Cronus Zen? <laughs> and has it improved your Call of Duty game? Uh, Eric is um, he's known as the tank. He's the, the cancanator, as they're calling on Call of Duty. Um, so he called me Krona Zen is a, it's a Call of Duty cheat that uh, all the hackers use. And um, I don't know if he just saying good or whatever. <laughs> he just started calling me that. Uh, played quite often with him and his mates, our other mates from South Africa. Um, yeah, I like to do that after training, play a bit of COD. Um, it's actually just good to chat with the boys. Um, just play around a bit, get you distracted for just after training before you go to mm. bed, just to take on the new day. Yeah. Uh, what is the last film that you watched? Lots. Um, I didn't watch films that often, but I think the last one I watched was Moneyball. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. With Brad Pitt, uh, yes. Yeah. I'm a big, big baseball fan, so yeah, I have seen that. So I, I watched that one probably like two weeks ago with Jasper. Um, yeah, and it was it was excellent, excellent film. Just to see the way he approaches things and the way he runs things was amazing to see. And what about music? Do you? I mean, music's part of everybody's life, but I mean, yeah. what what sort of music are you into? And does it change when you're training or at home, or is it the same throughout? I listen to anything. Um, my missus like likes the Afrikaans. Um, I'm not a big Afrikaans fan unless it is really good um which struggles a bit with afrikaans music nowadays um but i know i enjoy anything from english to afrikaans with a without a beat love songs anything you name it um i, lo- I enjoy listening to music um especially just when i drive into trainings and that but um yeah no i listen to anything to be honest I think we're at the end of our chat, my man. I know it was uh, short and sweet, but again, you know, yeah. I, I know how busy you guys are, and it's 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 always such a pleasure to to be able to chat and and like I said earlier, no, finally get you get you on the podcast, and just so that people yeah. have a bit a bit of an insight to to what the players are like off the pitch, as as opposed to just what they see on on TV and things like that, you know. So. Yeah. It genuinely it's such an honor to have you and you know we we chat a bit anyway and yeah I, I have nothing else to say other than thank you so much for being here no thank you so much i must say thank you to you thank you for what you're doing for the fellow south africans abroad as well like um, don't think it sometimes it goes a bit unnoticed um, but a lot of my friends and family follow follow you and it's good for them to also just get an update on what's happening and um what happened over the weekends uh, so no keep it up mate it's fantastic thank you so much my man and um, i'll talk to you again soon then yeah cheers darren cheers buddy thanks for the call all right cheers eh? bye hey, bye